This is my beautiful country, Tanzania. A country of wide open spaces and ash beauty. In my country, life is very hard. We see clouds that promise to bring rain, but they lie, and it never rains. Every day I must walk a very long distance to fetch water for my family. I must work hard so that my family will let me stay in school. Someday I go to school with no food. But I still love my beautiful Tanzania. It's my home. Soon I will journey to a country far, far away. A country I have only seen in a book. I have never left my village. I do not know what I will see. But I will travel with courage. At our school, they say, a journey of 1,000 miles begin with a single step. This is the story of our journey. Tanzania, East Africa, a country of extreme contrasts, home to Mount Kilimanjaro, the wild Serengeti, and the lush tropical paradise of exotic Zanzibar. Tanzania's brutal beauty is dominated by vast open plains, ancient tribal cultures, and the rhythm of a people whose history resonates with stories of struggle and triumph. This is one of their stories. At first glance, the village of Nzega is typical of most in rural Tanzania. Years of drought have taken their toll, but to these villagers, hardship and struggle is faced with courage and pride. For Grant Pierce, a gold mining engineer from Australia, it is this pride which inspires a dream that will change his life and the lives of 42 children forever. As the then managing director of a nearby Tanzanian gold mine, the Golden Pride Project, he took on the formidable task of starting social development in the surrounding villages. I came here in 1998 to start the Golden Pride Project and stumbled on a little school called Asanga. Um, it had 53 students, one teacher, no desks, dirt floor, no windows, no doors, no books, no pencils. But it had students and a teacher that was uh, willing to commit to educating these kids. From there, we started in a small way assisting the school. Um, we provided desks, we concreted the floor, um, plastered the walls, tidied it up a little bit. During these renovations, Grant's Golden Pride project strikes 24 karat gold. A small choir of 20 students, raw, untrained, but with voices of angels. They sing about their hopes for a better life, their dreams for an education, and their wish for their homeland, their Tanzania, to be free of poverty. The choir have made me to change my life. It made me proud of myself against the other children in the village. I was not feeling so good before. This is Shija Joseph. For Shija, the choir is a respite from the routine of his life. He lives in a small hut with his mother and five brothers and sisters. Like most teenagers his age, Shija has a schedule of chores. 
Every morning before school, he travels eight kilometers to collect 20 liters of unsanitized water. The trip is long, arduous, but essential for the survival of his family. Only after this task is completed, can Shija travel the four kilometers to attend the 7 a.m. roll call at school. With no television or computer games, choir practice is his recreation. It also gives him the opportunity to catch up with his fellow choir member and best friend, Jumani. Jumani is taken care of by his aunt, his father and extended family. His mother has left the home for a new family in another village and Jumani doubts he will ever see her again. But Jumani's father has embraced the role of primary parent and has developed a strong emotional bond with his son. Jumani's family earns a small living by selling what little crops they can grow in a small plot plagued by the seemingly never-ending drought. Tonight, the menu is tomatoes and dagar, sardines which have been transported from Lake Victoria some 400 kilometers away. It is a welcome break from the usual rice meal, but this one small pot will have to serve a family of eight. Deo is one of the youngest members of the choir. He lives in the heart of the village and has a somewhat easier life than his classmates. Unusually for these parts, his father, a pastor, and mother, a keen seamstress, have restricted their family to three children. As such, they can afford basic electricity and a three-room hut. Unlike a few of the other families who insist their children give up school activities to work in the fields, Deo's family encourages his participation in the choir. With a voice for song and an inquiring mind, Deo is 15, going on 30. Sai can tell a very different story. In Tanzania, life for women and girls is extraordinarily hard. I have no parents. When my mother died five years ago, I have to take care of my little brother by myself. But the first time I started to sing, it was such great happiness for me. At 15, and with no mother to protect her, Sai may soon be looked upon as marriage material. Her dowry will most likely be more than that of a few heads of cattle, but her life will be infinitely harder. Most Tanzanian women are expected to spend their entire lives child rearing, in addition to collecting firewood, water, tending to the sick, the elderly, and cultivating crops. To Sai, the choir is the only way she can find her voice. Grant notices the difference singing makes to these children, and he begins to hatch a plan. At that time, I thought it'd be great to bring more kids in. So we started a choir with 42 kids. So brought kids in from two other village primary schools. And the throwaway line was, if you're ever good enough, I'll have you recorded. And that's what happened. But that is not all that happens. Grant has christened the now 42-strong group the Golden Pride Children's Choir. And in a brazen move, sends their CD, recorded in a nearby village, to the organizers of one of the world's most prestigious music festivals. Two months later, he receives the biggest shock of his life. The World of Music, Arts and Dance Festival, created by rock legend Peter Gabriel, sends the choir an invitation to perform at the event in front of over 20,000 people on the other side of the world. It is beyond anyone's dreams and beyond anyone's budget. You know, a trip for 42 kids to the UK um, is not a cheap exercise or an easy exercise to undertake. The budget was about 71,000 US in terms of hard cash to get them there with flights, accommodation, meals, bus transport and so on. On top of that, we had to find clothes, shoes, 
toothbrushes, um, deodorant, suitcases. Uh, so this whole project just mushroom. The children hear the news of Grant's plan to send them to London. They are overjoyed. He is overwhelmed. There was an opportunity for these kids to have a once in a lifetime experience and it wasn't my place to say no. For me as a human being, I've never dreamed before. But now to travel, it is to be lucky. We are so very lucky. Of course, there is one other slight hitch to consider. These children had never ever left their village. They have no concept of the first world. Simple things such as running water, electricity, crossing a road, even eating with a knife and fork are a mystery to them. And everyone wonders, how will they cope? It has been four weeks since the children were told of their impending trip to England. In their world of broken promises, doubts creep in. So Grant arrives back at the village to reassure the children the trip is still happening. What he doesn't tell them is that he has fallen 35,000 US dollars short in donations to get them there. In a country where the average annual income is only 120 US dollars per year, it is obvious the donations must come from other sources. But this setback is soon overshadowed by news of a real tragedy. For Rita January, the original founder of the choir scheduled to go on the trip, has tragically died at the age of 26. The choir are told the shattering news at a rehearsal. Farida was one of their most loved teachers, and it hits them hard. In an attempt to lift their spirits, Peter Charles, their choir master, encourages them to sing a happy song. Not surprisingly, today their hearts and voices are not in it. For Grant, devastation soon turns to determination, and the journey takes on a whole new meaning. Still unaware of the financial challenges that lie ahead to launch their trip, an unusual assembly is called for the choir. Today, they will be taught the finer art of Western dining, using a knife and fork. It is somewhat a heartbreaking sight, with empty plates teasing their hungry stomachs. On this day, Grant too is challenged. 42 winter jackets bearing the Golden Pride Children's Choir emblem painstakingly sewn and donated by a company in Australia, have arrived for the children. But 15 of the jackets have been stolen. It is another setback. For Grant, the situation is do or die. He cannot let them down now, and arrives at the conclusion that the only way to completely fund the trip is to finance the shortfall himself. The tight budget allows for two small meals a day, no spending money, and absolutely no mistakes. It is the biggest day in the history of the village. In the early hours, neighboring villages from miles around begin to gather. One senses that only the onslaught of rain would create more cause for celebration. Ladies in their Sunday best take up prime positions. And 
local tribes compete for the spotlight. Five hours later, dignitaries, politicians and village chairmen arrive, and the formal celebrations can officially begin. Finally, it is time for the choir to leave. They will return in just seven days, but to some, it'll seem like a lifetime. On a bus for the first time in their lives, the excitement of the day's events rapidly dissolves. Just one hour out of their village and everything is foreign. Wide eyes take in new scenery. But for some, fear takes its toll. The threat of hijacking on these roads means the group must stop overnight at the only available accommodation. Mattresses with no bedding provide little comfort, even to those accustomed to sleeping on a dirt floor. It is their first night away from home. There is no singing tonight. After a restless night, the children are eager to be on their way. They will have more than enough time to absorb new sights and sounds as the bus carelessly traverses what must be the worst excuse for a highway imaginable. The nearly 1,000 kilometer trip to Tanzania's coastal capital, Dar es Salaam, is very roughly estimated to be 20 hours, but no one can be sure, because no one has ever done it non-stop before. As it turns out, neither would we. The children are blissfully unaware that the bus is in serious trouble. Eight breakdowns are explained away as an excuse to stretch their legs. For some of the girls, there is a breakdown of the emotional kind, perhaps brought on by the stress of the trip. In front of 41 of their classmates, a few of them have their very first period. Besides the embarrassment and discomfort, it means they are now ready for marriage. Finally, a shattered gearbox forces the bus and the children to spend the night in the middle of nowhere. It has been 36 hours since the children left their village and Dar es Salaam, the coastal capital of Tanzania, approaches. To these children, it is the biggest city they have ever seen. <laughs> the 
One can only wonder, what will they make of London? Arriving at their temporary home for the night, a sparse mission in the urban heart, they are greeted by a familiar face and very good news. Thanks to Grant's persistence and donations from 10 countries, the full 71,000 US dollars needed for the trip has finally been raised. 42 suitcases packed with donated items have also arrived. To these children, a gift of a pencil would spell a very special Christmas. This is beyond belief. And even more surprises await. Tomorrow they will embark on their very first plane trip. So today, 42 children are about to be educated in the curious bathroom habits of the Western world. Dotto, the one nanny assigned to look after all the children, has her work cut out for her. When we got to Da, I walked in one of the rooms and I found this girl washing hands in the toilets. I felt so sorry, but I, I just had to tell her, no, this is not the way we do it. So from there then, I just knew that I had to teach them everything. It's amazing like, to teach these kids how to flush toilets, take uh, open showers, taps, switch on the lights, and we take it for granted. To us, it's uh, normal. And for them, it's just like everything is new to them, it's their first time. Some of the girls had their first period. It was really like frustrating to them. Like one of the girls just cried. I just had to help and teach her that it was normal. And I didn't teach her right there and then how to use the pad. <laughs> and she was all right then. Deo and his friend tentatively unpack their new suitcases and examine the strange contents. The first sight of a toothbrush and toothpaste provide much amusement. Shija offers to be the first of the group to take his very first shower. When I had shower, my skin started to change color. I was getting clean. This day was to bring many more firsts. Passports and visa formalities will prove to be yet another challenge as the Golden Pride Children's Choir encounter the red tape of Tanzania. But newly washed, fed and clothed, the children quickly adopt the world-weary look of seasoned travellers. After a morning of bureaucracy, another big surprise is in store. This will be the very first time the children have seen the ocean. A beachside feast with more food than they have ever seen before is being prepared. When we see the water, we just laugh. The girls, they were scared of the water. But to see the ocean, I have no word for the ocean. Soft white sand replaces dust, and water, such as scarcity at home, is everywhere to be seen. For the first time on this long journey, the Golden Pride Children's Choir are simply kids.
After a long day of discovery, sleep comes easy. But tomorrow, the real dream begins. News of the choir's extraordinary adventure has spread fast and a band of local musicians, entertainers and the media have gathered to herald their arrival at Dar es Salaam's international airport. Inside the airport, it is contained chaos as the children battle to understand security check-ins, ticket allocations and a confusion of airport procedures. But what really stops the children in their tracks is the sight of their very first escalator. They were now just one step away from their very first plane trip. Embarking on the Boeing 737 jet stuns the children into silence. It is an entirely new world and there is much to explore. Heathrow Airport, London, and one of the most dramatic culture shocks is in the air. London is calling, but in a very strange language. For the first time, they are seeing people of foreign nationalities everywhere they look. Outside the airport, they hear their first sounds of the first world. The first sight of new cars, new buses, new roads, their new world literally speeding past. Nothing looks the same, nothing smells the same, nothing is the same. I can't believe I'm in London. To see it, experience it, and touch it. I was shaking. I was not afraid of anything. I am just amazed at everything I see. Now I want to see everything, just everything. Here in London, the people have everything. They are so lucky.
I don't believe I'm in England. My name is Sai. It is a dream for me to be here because I never go out of my country. The things that most amaze, it is so beautiful. In my dream, I want to study here so I can be like the other kids I see here. If I could live like these people, I wouldn't shake or worry about anything. The prestigious University of Reading will be the children's home for the next few days. It is their first taste of student life and their first taste of English food. Some of these kids just go without food and some of them just have one meal a day. It was their first time to see a lot of food in front of them and some of them didn't know even what to eat, like it was rice, meat, and they just wanted everything at once. And some of them even got ill because they just ate so much. There is so many food here and I feel my stomach is paining. Those beans they gave me, I couldn't even finish the plate. You eat, eat everything you see. That's why your stomach is as pain. It is late evening, but even after a 36-hour bus trip and 10 hours on a plane, there is no sign of jet lag. Especially when the children discover they each have their very own room. The best thing about having my room, the room is very clean. In my village, we sleep five together, so we cannot turn and you stick on each other. Even though I have no one to talk to, I'm happy. When I sleep alone, I'm free. It has been a mere three days since the choir first left their small African village, but already their lives back home are another world away. Today it is high time for a little fun. The first stop is the famous London Science Museum home to one of the world's most impressive collections of science and technology exhibits. To children who have only just experienced turning on a light, the sight of lasers, futuristic technology and thousands of interactive exhibits is mind-boggling. Legs and arms accustomed to hours of cycling and pumping for water now discover they also have the power to generate electricity. It is all a total shock to their sensibilities. But once again, the children seem well able to take it all in their stride. until the time comes to watch their very first movie. In 3D, no less. 42 pairs of innocent eyes aren't quite ready for this bewildering experience. I was excited and scary watching the big film, but it was okay because the girl on the screen, she was scared too. Now it was time for another three-dimensional experience, a tour through the streets of London, a city of over 11 million people that until now they had only ever seen in a book. Yeah. 
kids are fantastic, all 42 of them. And um, this week, sort of living with them, and they were so well received with the staff at Reading University who accommodated them, fed them. Uh, the head chef, Charlie, put the hat around with his, a few of his mates um, and bought a probably top of the range keyboard for the kids to bring back to school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The reaction was just fantastic wherever we went. Their spirit has moved a small audience of hardened Londoners. But will it be enough to move an audience of over 20,000 people tomorrow? As I am, I don't have anything, no gift to give them. But all I can give is my voice. I pray that is enough. According to the story we have heard, white people are not welcoming to the black people. People told us, no one will be there to see you or to welcome you. I am afraid for tomorrow. Billed as one of the greatest culturally diverse music festivals on earth, the World of Music, Arts and Dance Festival is three days and nights of non-stop celebration. Internationally renowned musicians from all over the world have played to sell out crowds. On the final day of the festival, in front of thousands of music lovers, a children's choir from a small village in Tanzania are about to take centre stage. In their long journey of more than 1,000 miles, the Golden Pride Children's Choir must now take one last step. Here for you today, please welcome a massive round of applause, please, for the Golden Pride Children's Choir. Thank you. Every challenge they have faced over the last seven days, every triumph and tear, every fascination and fear, has now come down to this one single moment.
I had goosebumps. I didn't know whether I wanted to laugh or whether I wanted to cry. And for me, that one split second made it all worthwhile. Yeah, I just felt so proud of them. And I think uh, Tanzania, the, the country, should be proud of what they've done. Just lovely, lovely, lovely. Lots of feeling and terrific. I really enjoyed it. That was really amazing. You can't say anything else, can you? You just can't say anything. Just too emotional. It's brilliant, brilliant. She brought tears to my eyes almost. It was uh, very moving, very moving. Fantastic. It was really good to see them because they really like, looked like they were enjoying it. They had like a really good time. Fantastic. I've been to Tanzania and I'm touched to tears. <laughs> really wonderful. They were enjoying it and the audience enjoyed it. It was really lovely. <laughs> Amazing. I can't believe it's their only performance over here, to be honest with you. They should be on at the World Festival Hall or something. Right? They're amazing. The journey that they took to come here, I just think it's extraordinary. And uh, just wish them good luck. Fantastic. They're absolutely fantastic. Just their faces, their smiles, they're just lovely. I love them to bits. I've come so far away from where I was. Not just in distance, but in my heart. Music has given us a new step in our lives. We are proud of who we are. That is what we will carry with us forever. I felt my heart to burst. The people in the crowd, they were so happy for us. And I start to believe, now I can do anything. Come on, let's hear it! Golden Pride, on your feet, please be outstanding for these fantastic children. You would not believe what they've been through just to get here. And this is their only gift, would you believe this? This is their only gift that they're doing. Oh. Unbelievable, what they've had to go through just to get here for you. This is, this is their time for their encore. They're not going to go off and come back, this is it. One more time, big round of applause.
have gone to a music festival that's the fifth largest music festival in Europe and won the crowd. Um, that's no small achievement. Absolutely fantastic. Please, a massive round of applause. Come on! I felt like a bond developed over this last week, so I've got a an extended family of 42 kids, which I'm really happy about, and I'm not going to lose touch. So um, I don't know when I'll be back with them, but uh, something tells me I probably will be. I'm hoping it's not goodbye. I'll miss them a lot. Miss them a lot.